World War II found the Navy fighting in both the Atlantic and the Pacific Oceans. In the Battle of the Atlantic, Allied merchant and supply convoys from North America headed to Europe to support the Allied war effort. Unable to match the naval might of British and other Allied navies on the surface, the Germans sent swarms of submarines, or U-boats, against the merchant convoys to try to stem the all-important supply lines. The Battle of the Atlantic. For a time, we were losing that battle. The ships that were sunk and the cargoes that went down with them were sorely needed in England, in Africa, in Russia. We had to find the answer. And we did, in one of the most versatile fighting teams that ever put to sea, the Baby Flat Top and the Destroyer Escort. Born of dire necessity, the Baby Flat Top was a mongrel, a merchant ship turned carrier. But she was a mongrel with a nasty set of teeth, as the Card, the Bow, and the Block Island soon proved to Hitler's pack of Unterseebuch. The carrier's aerial patrols cover that stretch of ocean out of reach of shore-based aircraft, where the U-boats once lurched in comparative safety. Now, any sub which surfaces within their ken is promptly machine gunned, rocketed, or bombed. Slowly, the summation of improved tactics, overwhelming manufacturing capability, and several technological advances in submarine detection and hunting technologies gradually turned the tide against the Germans. More and more German submarines were sunk, and fewer Allied merchant vessels. The conflict eventually culminated in May of 1943, in which German U-boats, at their highest numbers of the war, were still devastated, and Allied losses continued to decrease. In the following year, Allied hunter-killer groups continued to swarm German U-boats, turning the hunters into the hunted, leading to a battle in which our object today was recovered. Today we are joined by David D'Onofrio, the Special Collections Librarian for the Naval Academy Archives, and Thomas Cutler, historian and author with the Naval Institute. We also feature footage from Away Borders, a 1945 U.S. Navy documentary. And we're here today in Special Collections and Archives to talk about this document, a captured uh, German war diary from the U-505. On June 4th, 1944, Task Group 22.3, under the command of Captain Daniel Gallery, made sonar contact with a suspected German U-boat. In the ensuing battle, Gallery's destroyer escorts and Avengers launched from his flagship, the USS Guadalcanal, pummeled U-505. until she surfaced and was ultimately abandoned by her crew. Uh, a rather inexperienced crew at that making a crucial error, not realizing that their ship wasn't so gravely damaged as to sink her. Still, the crew made every attempt to scuttle the ship so that the Americans couldn't capture her. Immediate uh, salvage operations commenced with men launched from some of the destroyers and Guadalcanal in an attempt to stabilize the ship. If you've ever seen uh, Hollywood's U-571, you can imagine the scene men scrambling around, struggling to close valves while trying to learn German at a moment's notice, while also seizing vital documents from the ship, uh, encryption material, and of course, this war diary, a hour-by-hour -hour and day-by-day -day accounting of all of the actions of the U-505. Once secured, the submarine was taken in tow back to Bermuda, where she arrived on June 19, 1944 the first enemy vessel captured by the U.S. Navy since the War of 1812. The, uh, the U-505 is an interesting story. Admiral Dan Gallery uh, was the, the man who was most responsible for this. He was the commander of the task group and so forth. And he'd been training uh, crews, boarding crews, for this very possibility should it come along, able to uh, prevent it from sinking. Now, think about the, the courage in this thing. It's pretty immense when you think about it because they go aboard the submarine uh, that there are demolition charges set, some of which had not gone off, and, and uh, there's flooding going on. The ship could go down, the, the boat could go down at any moment. Um, so as a result, uh, the other thing that I thought was interesting, uh, that there are demolition charges set, some of which had not gone off, and, and uh, 
there's flooding going on, the ship could go down, the, the boat could go down at any moment. Um, so as a result, uh, the other thing that I thought was interesting too is the ingenuity that these people showed because they, in order to stop the flooding, they needed to have pumps, but there was no power in the, in the sub. So they started towing the sub and they uh, linked up the propellers to the, uh, to the generators in such a way that it, it, they actually recharged the batteries, which then let them start the pumps and pump out the water and uh, ultimately the ship uh, was saved and the, uh, she's now been uh, put on display at the Museum of Science and Industry in Chicago, uh, where she is today. A wonderful display if you uh, ever get a chance to go out and see this thing. It's, it's a beautifully preserved and, and done a wonderful job of, of capturing the, the whole incident and submarine warfare and anti-submarine warfare from World War II. On June 19th, the U-505 was towed into Bermuda and there remains, as a prize of war, one less wolf to hunt with the pack. If the men of the old Navy had been looking down from some quarter deck in the sky, they've seen strange things. Steel ships maneuvering at high speed, Roaring mechanical monsters catapulted from their decks, and an enemy vessel heaving up from the depths. But one thing is familiar. One thing hasn't changed. The courage, resolution, and hardy seamanship of the men of our Navy.